Man, I hate Marco Polo. Just hate his guts. Uh, I know it's not healthy uh, to keep such a grudge for like 600 years, or at least about a guy that died some 600 years ago. It's just that like growing up, my name is Marco, and there were just so many games about Marco Polo. Uh, I grew up in Italy, where there's also the word Polo, which sounds almost like Polo, but means chicken. So Marco Polo, Marco Polo, Marco Chicken, uh, Marco Polo. I thought, why couldn't you just call... Giovanni Polo. Uh, it's okay. Marco Polo, great guy. I, I, I hate him, but a great guy. I acknowledge the fact that he's very important historically. This great traveler that has the travel to uh, modern day China in the Middle Ages. It's crazy. In the Middle Ages, just going to the next town was deadly. This guy goes to, to what is now China. It's crazy. Uh, so it has a really key role in the cultural uh, relationship between uh, Europe and, and Asia. His writings have been of paramount importance in Western culture. I just wish he had another name. But now you can relieve the drama, the adventure, the upside downness, the excitement of uh, the voyages of Marco Polo, thanks to a game uh, published in the US by Zeman Games, uh, which is called precisely The Voyages of Marco Polo. This is a medium uh, weight uh, Euro game. Medium for some players, probably uh, even on the heavier side of things. It is a game where you do play the role of several travelers, so each player controls uh, a traveler that goes to Asia, starting from Venice, where Marco Polo was from, and travel there, tries to set up outposts uh, to collect resources. The ultimate idea is that you're collecting resources to collect more resources, to collect with trade points. Mm. Euro game, quite your components, nice looking components, a lot of cool wooden bits. But why don't we take a closer look instead of just looking at the back of the box? Let's take a closer look then. The board of the game is divided in an area that you will use to travel, set up your outpost and gain various benefits in an area with an abstract system of boxes where you will reserve actions. This game revolves around dice, you have a pool of dice, you roll them at the beginning of your round and then during the round you will take turns, each turn you will take an action and your standard action will be to reserve an action, to reserve an effect by placing a die on a certain box depending on the value that you place you will be able to gain different benefits or different levels of benefits for example if I'm placing a die here then I can purchase camels this is the line for purchasing camel in the Grand Bazaar and I can purchase camels up to the value of five which is here five camels some actions require multiple dice, for example if I want to buy silk I need to put two dice there and I will be able to purchase up to the value of the lowest dice that I place there. So with 5 and 5 I can get the benefit in the 5 column. If it was 5 and 3 I would only be able to get up to 2 silk and a camel. You have your play, your board, which you can use to keep things organized, to keep your resources organized. Uh, here you place also your two objective cards. You receive, receive two of them at the beginning of the game. They indicate specific cities on the map and the amount of victory points that you will earn by setting up outposts there. So these will be important at the end of the game for scoring purposes. Your player board is also where you place your contracts. You can have two at a time. Contracts indicate conditions that you're trying to meet and they are printed on the left side of the contracts and when you're able to meet these conditions you fulfill the contract, you pay the corresponding resources and you earn the benefits that are indicated on the right side of the contracts. During the game there will be ways of getting new contracts but once you fulfill one you pay the cost, you gain the benefit and then you flip the contract face down you place it here in this area of your player's board and at the end of the game the player that has fulfilled the most contracts will score seven points. Back to 
the main board there we have the map which indicates which shows the area where the players will move players will have a marker indicating their position and they will simply move from place to place movement is an action that you perform using one of the action boxes that i showed you earlier or in the area that i showed you earlier spending dice to move on the board you will move from location to location what is interesting is that these locations have two, most of them at least, have two things on them. One is a benefit that you gain for the first player to reach that outpost. So you end your movement there, you place your outpost and you gain the benefit indicated by the corresponding tile. Here for example I got three camels. Then this card is placed there and simply gives me another action slot, another place where I can place a die and perform actions now that I have an outpost and so to speak I have activated this action for me. Here for example I can trade two spice for two victory points. What is cool is that both these tiles and the cards that you place on the on the city come in a much larger number than what you need in a game so you shuffle them together and you will not you and you will and you place them randomly during setup and you will not use all of them in each game actually for the tiles that go on top for the first player you have three extra ones but you have a lot a lot of cards indicating special benefits and special actions that you can perform uh, when you set an outpost in a specific city which means huge replay value the board will look different every time because of different arrangement of the benefits up there and especially because of the actions that will be available you will never have exactly the same set of actions each time you'll travel you set up outposts the basic idea is that you're trying to gain victory points which is a very respectable thing to do and you do that by uh, fulfilling contracts by uh, uh, fulfilling a lot of those contracts by uh, return or by trading goods for uh, for victory points and then by meeting various other sets of possible victory conditions that will give you victory points in the end. Now back to the original idea. At the beginning of the turn you roll the dice and then at the beginning of the round you roll your dice and then you will spend them during uh, the, the round and you can perform an action each turn. An action is this one which is called the can's favor. You place a die there on the leftmost uh, open slot on that action and then you can choose any one of these resources, a gold, a spice, a silk or two camels. Uh, camels are the most common currency in the game, you use them for a lot of different things. Other players may also use the can's favor, but for them, in order to uh, place a die there in the next slot, they need to produce a die number that is equal to or higher than the one before. Now the next player will be able to place a die there only with a 3 or a 4 and so on and so forth. Here we have an action which simply gives you 5 coins, it's very simple, very obvious and intuitive. Also it is an action that is not based uh, on the number that you rolled. Most of the actions have to do with the numbers that you rolled. We already talked about uh, the Grand Bazaar where you gain resources based on the line that you're occupying and the uh, numbers that you place there and this is the main source of gold but gold is extremely expensive. There are also other ways of getting gold for example from the can's favor but gold is a very valuable resource in this game. Here is where you acquire new contracts. You place a die there to reserve that action and then you can acquire one or two new contracts in the range indicated by the number on the die that you place there. So for example I'll be able to acquire one or two contracts uh, among the one, two and three level. I decided to acquire these two then all the other ones slide down and the action uh, is taken. I can just take these contracts, select, so maybe discard one. I but I have more options of things that I can try to uh, fulfill to gain points and other resources later on in the game. 
Traveling. Traveling is a very important thing in this game. This is a game of traveling merchants after all. When you travel, you place your dice here. Again, it has to do with the, with the amount of points, amount of pips on your lowest value. So, for example, here I have two. I can travel up to the two column, or it's the space marked with a two, with two pips. When you're spending dice to travel, you also need to spend the amount of coins indicated there. It would be seven to travel using the two pip section, seven coins. I can move up to two spaces, but there may be, what am I call them? Hidden, what am I gonna call them? Hidden fees, just like, just like today, really. Just like it happens these days. That there are further expenses that you need to face, for example, to move from one location to another, you may have to spend camels or money. It, there either, if there is an added traveling cost, it is simply indicated on the, on the track that you're traveling. Sometimes it is a sea route, sometimes it is a land route, sometimes you're moving in the desert. But definitely you're traveling a lot or trying to travel a lot. It's pretty important in this game. And that is for the basic actions. Um, but as I said, there will be a lot more actions that you will unlock throughout the game as you set your outposts in different locations. And that allows you then to perform Further actions, for example, here I would be able to trade any one of these goods with for two camels. So you may be able to gain victory points, free travel, or I should say cheaper traveling options. Nothing is free in this game, really. And then you also have uh, other areas that also give you benefits. So those are the areas indicated by those blue tiles. If you have an outpost there, you do not need to place dice there and to spend dice to gain the benefit, it simply indicates the fact that at the beginning of each new round you will gain the corresponding advantage printed in the blue area. So automatic at the beginning of each round, if I'm the red player, I will gain three camels and I will gain five coins because of these two outposts that I have in those areas. A couple of extra things. Can you take actions that have already been used or we should say reserved by other players? Yes, you can, uh, but it's more expensive. When you do take an action that has already been reserved by another player, that one takes three. When you do take an action that has already been reserved by another player, you place your dice on top of their dice and you have to pay some extra money. You have to pay uh, equal to the lowest value of the dice that you're placing there. So I'm placing a three, a five and a three. Then I have to pay three coins and I will be able to gain the benefit up to the three level of this line. The first player didn't have to pay that. Another thing that I forgot to mention, but that is very important, is that each player has a character and each character is assigned at the beginning of the game and characters have different abilities. This came to mind because now because I played a game in which my special power was not to have to pay when I placed my dice on top of other players' dice. And that is pretty sweet. So if you're traveling and you're not the first traveler in the turn, then you're gonna spend money to place your dice on top of the other player's dice. Then you pay for traveling, then you may have hidden transportation fees. Traveling is pretty complex and expensive as it very well should when you're traveling through the desert in the Middle Ages. It shouldn't be very easy. So while in a turn you only have a standard action, you also have multiple bonus actions. You can take several ones in a single turn if you decide to and you have the necessary resources. You may complete a contract, again simply by uh, flipping it and putting it in your board, paying the corresponding cost and getting the corresponding benefits. You can take three coins from the board, you simply place a die there and this action uh, is not affected by the value of the money that you, that you put there. You may choose to re-roll a die from your initial pool but that costs one camel. You can also spend two camels instead to adjust the die result by one, turning a three into a four or a four into a three. You may 
also take a black dye very important it costs three camels pretty expensive but it gives you a full new beautiful dye which is really awesome you have that extra action and you also have another little bit of extra flexibility because uh, you will not be allowed in this game to have more than one die of your color on a single action so if I am the yellow player and I want to get more camels and this is the situation I can't simply do this because I can't have two dies of the same color there what I can do however is to grab a red a black die roll it and then use that one then I'm not breaking the rule of no more than a die of the same color in a single action at the end of each round uh, there will be a point when the players simply have run out of actions and that is when the round is over new contracts are placed here on the contract track you determine who the next first player is for the next turn and you for next round and you play the next round the game lasts a total of five rounds and at the end you simply uh, score all of the final points probably players will already have should have some victory points based from based on previous actions like trading goods for victory points Two of the victory points that they have acquired up to that point, they will add the points from possible other sources, for example from the objective cards uh, in Beijing, being in Beijing, setting an outpost in Beijing also will score you victory points. The more victory points that you get, the earlier you're the one to set up an outpost there. So if you're the first player, 10 points, the second player, 7, so on and so forth. If you have an outpost in Beijing, you can also trade 2 gold or 2 uh, or two spice or 2 silk for a victory point. Camels do not count as a resource here. You also have seven points for the player who completed the most contracts. You total all of the victory points on most sources, and at the point, the player with the highest score is the winner of the game. When you play this game, uh, the first thing that comes to mind, at least that came to mind to me, was Kingsburg in Kingsport Festival which is kind of like a re-implementation of Kingsburg. This idea that you have a limited amount of resources each turn, they will be determined by the dice, that you roll by the placement of the dice and then that will reverberate on a board where uh, there will be spatial interconnections that you're trying to exploit to your advantage. In that sense you have that similarity but it's not um, a matter of twin brothers, it's more a matter of cousins. In one of them you almost think like ah oh, maybe that Cousin should take a DNA test, we're not sure about him really. There is enough difference here that if you have these games in your collection, uh, Kingsburg, Kingsburg Festival, it is still perfectly fine to add the Verges of Marco Polo. I think actually you probably should because I like this one even better. Uh, it does not retire the other two games. This is just heavier, more nuanced, more complex. So not for all groups. Uh, there are groups with weaker shoulders and probably will not feel like asking them to carry Marco Polo, metaphorically, gameplay-wise. Because, as I said, it can be uh, fairly involved in terms of rules, but not so much in that sense much more in the terms of the strategy and the interaction uh, in the fact that there are just so many possible actions and you have to figure out a way of building an effective engine of resources engine uh, which however does not feel too mechanical too dry uh, too stiff because it is an engine that you may not be able to exploit maybe you do have fantastic contracts in a great position on the board uh, but then your role is not successful and you roll very low you could roll potentially a five not a five on a die like five dice roll a five total which has happened to me actually this is true fact happened to me this being said uh even if you 
uh, if that happens to you, uh, there are ways of counterbalancing this. For example, if you're all less than 15 pips total, then you get an amount of camels at the beginning of your turn uh, to make up the difference. So I rolled a five total on five dice, and I gained 10 camels, which I use for other effects. But when I talked about not necessarily being able to, um, to exploit a certain engine, to uh, create a plan at the beginning of the game and stick to it for the entire game. What I mean is that the contracts will come out in different ways and maybe the contract that you hope will come out is not there or the contract that you wanted was taken by somebody else. A certain action that you wanted was taken by somebody else and now it is more expensive to you and maybe you won't be able to take it or if you take it you have to sacrifice something else that you want to sacrifice. The fact that there is a priority in the selection of the actions and they're cheaper for the first player and it will be hard to be the first player on all actions, that creates a lot of interaction. The same applies uh, to uh, cities where the first player to get there get certain resources. Beijing is more friendly to the first player to get there. Uh, it is definitely not a multiplayer solo even though you may have that impression at first. There are a lot of ways in which players can interact can steal resources, can reduce other players chances. Uh, there's even a little bit of a race game in a sense when it comes to getting to certain uh, locations. Well, you may spend all of your resources just traveling to Beijing, which is a good grab of points if you're the first player to win that race, but you do not have to play it as a race game. You can simply work on collecting your resources uh, keep a low profile so that people don't go for the same objectives that you're trying to complete, so you have less conflict, and then you have your little your little money engine, gold engine, camel engine, and you can play it this way as a game about investment instead of a race game. Um, that's the point, there are many possible strategies, many different paths to victory. And uh, it is not a design that I think will be all that simple to resolve. Maybe there is a way of breaking the design, but there are just so many variables from game to game. The same effects may not be there because different cards will determine different possible actions in the cities from game to game. Uh, other advantages are completely situational, meaning they only will be present in certain games and then the die rolls will force you to do different things. Again, luck here uh, is not all that crucial to me because it's not a matter of getting resources or not getting them. It's a matter of getting different resources. So it is more like a random distribution of resources that then you have to be able to maximize. So to me, being able to use your dice well, it's incredibly more important than this design than getting a good role, getting good results. Uh, and in that sense, I find the game uh, pretty meritocratic, even though there is such a large component of die rolling and, and random elements that come out of the decks, uh, the contract decks, and objectives that are assigned at the beginning and things like that. So there is luck, but to me this luck has been uh, sealed around a system, within a system of, of rules, of options that the players can exploit that make the player feel in control and overall makes the game feel meritocratic. A Euro game, not an adventure game, even though the theme potentially could be very adventurous, but a very good Euro game. Uh, actually, one of the games that they played at the Origins Game Fair 2015, one of my favorite games from that game fair. This one and Elysium, uh, probably my two favorite games from Origins 2015. As of now, one of my favorite Euro games of 2015. Sure. Is not the kind of game that I play the most often, but I play quite a few of them in the last couple of weeks or months, more than, than in the past, I feel. But definitely a very good one. Fun, rewarding, meaty, full of decisions, full of options, and with a stellar replay value thanks to all of the variable factors that may or may not present themselves from game to game.